just simply says, it says, I, I've just got this feeling that everything is going to be all right. Go ahead and judge me when you first look at me, but tell me what it is you truly see. A gang member to be feared that is covered in ink or a two-time felon that's running the streets. Am I just a statistic wasting the air I breathe? You could deny it, but this is the truth I speak. I can admit that in life I have made a few mistakes. And if bad choices wade in water, by now I have a lake. But no one knows the price that I ha really had to pay or the sacrifices that I made to let others freely walk away. People are people no matter where you go. These walls don't stop a human from being a human. When you're here and these books are up on that stage, you're not here. Behind these electric fences, walls, you're not an animal. You're a human. You're somebody. And I believe that nobody's perfect, but the thing is to realize, recognize your mistakes. And when you come here, especially this prison, they have a lot of uh, classes, especially these, uh, these classes here, the different art forms. And dealing with uh, Michael, he'll take you there. He'll dig deep. And the stories that we write, the stories that we tell, you know, brings us back to who we actually are. I forgive you. 41 years I've been up in this game called life. I forgive you. 25 of those years I've been stuck right here in prison since I was 16 years old. I forgive you. For everybody that I hurt, emotional, mental, physical, in out of prison, I forgive you. Mom, I think that I forgive you because I forgive you because I want you. Nah, square square. Woman, I need, I need for you to forgive yourself. My poetry is helps me remember the beauty of life. You know, it's through my poetry and through this class, through the things that Augustine and, and Patricia ha has taught us, that I can sit here in front of you today and tell you whether I go home in a year or whether I'm here for 10 more years, I'm happy with the person I became. I wasn't a criminal that came to prison. I committed a crime and came to prison. And a lot of people that commit a crime and come to prison become criminals, you know what I mean? I became a writer, I became an artist, I became a philanthropist. I became the person that my, my, my mother originally wanted me to be. I just ended up living in a different state. And one day I'll leave this state and I, I'll share what, what I learned to another state. So real quick, before the choir starts, we want to say thank you again to Mr. Michael McCarty and the Houston Church. That was the conclusion There's a, a human tendency, you, you make judgments about people. Somebody's been to prison, ooh. People change, people can change, and, and, and people want to change. Sometimes people want to change. Be all right. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. That's my boy right here. That's right. So that's what I got for y'all, man. Wow. Don't, don't forget about us in here. We still got hope. This next song says uh, to hold on. Change is coming. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Even in here, you can still hold on. Change is coming. Right. Right. Doesn't mean that the good things won't happen for you. Okay. I tell the guys, one of the first things I told them was to bloom where you're planted. You're planted here right now, so bloom. Be a great example. Be a positive example right where you are. Okay. So this song says, hold on. Change is coming. When I got the opportunity to come inside, I was like, oh wow, God, thank you. I get a chance to go in and minister to inmates on the inside. But once I got inside, it was more like they were ministering to me. Um, I thought that what I was doing there at church as being the choir director, although it was very fulfilling and what I was called to do, but 
coming inside and having men and the women, when I did the women's presence, appreciate and really come in with a, um, a heart to, to sing and worship, um, it was amazing. One of the comments that I got from the men and the women was when they came into class, it was like a place of solace, a place of that like, they could relax and that they can just feel peace. And to me, that was that was everything. That just for two hours, that I could create a, a atmosphere that they would be at peace. You're dealing with a population of people um, that have been wounded. They've been. Uh, They've been broken. They, they've went through a lot. The Bible says, uh, how shall we sing a song in a strange land? Art, art has the way of, of inspiring people. Uh, I think if we lose uh, inspiration, if we lose hope, uh, I think we've lost everything. True art is not confined to a geographical location, amen. It, it, it can transcend uh, even into a lonely cell. Uh, men that are sitting in the shoe, sitting in uh, segregating housing units who don't have nothing but a song. And, and if it wasn't for that one song that they had, they would have lost their mind. If they didn't have the ability to sit down and draw or have a, a, a poem, they would have lost their natural mind and went crazy in here. But that's the beautiful thing about art is that it stretches. It goes beyond uh, 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 the borders that man sets and, and it comes inside the gate, you know, uh, art broke in, it broke in here as well as God, it broke in. You don't have to worry about me breaking out of here, but you do got to worry about art breaking in, amen? <laughs> art, art to break in and, and it'll inspire people. When Marcia came in, I would come into her class and it would just be a terrible day and she'd start singing, hold on changes come in and it would just carry me through the week and I would just be like oh my goodness and I'd start I'd start I start feeling down or low and, I'd, and then I'd hear her voice and her smile and I hold on changes coming sometimes just having some hope having somebody come into the prison and say you're not worthless you know you might have been set aside from society and kicked out and, and you're a castaway right now but there's some redemptive value in you. You're still, a, you're still a human being. There's intrinsic value, meaning, and worth in you. And you can still overcome, you can still change, and there's a lot of people that believe in second chances. There's a lot of people that believe that you can be forgiven. And of course, a lot of that comes from faith and religious backgrounds, but it also, in acting, you have the ability to, to utilize whatever your life experience is and grow from it and learn emotional regulation and learn to channel, channel all that energy or that pain or that hurt into something creative, something beautiful, an art piece, a song, a, a performance on stage, you know, something of that magnitude. The one thing that makes it tremendously important to come here is the inmates, their, their, their energy, their desire, las ganas que ellos tienen para trabajar, the desire that they have to learn and to, to go to a different place that's not here. Our focus has been to touch those, those sensitive places, to reach them, to, to get them to speak out, because I do not believe in oppression. Even in a place like this, people should be, should be singing songs, and even if we didn't, even if it wouldn't allow it, we would sing songs anyway here. I hate oppression, and, and that's the whole idea, is to fight against it. Del 100%, un 95% nunca regresa a la prisión de los que han participado en Arte Incorrecto. Un 5% regresa pero eso es porque ya no estuvieron bien metidos en arte incorrecto. Pero cuando usted se, se mete lo que es el, el, el sentimiento del arte y el arte fructifica en ti y empiezas a hacerlo de, ya de verdad en, en otros niveles, este, las personas ya no tienen el pensamiento de estar haciendo maldad dentro de la prisión. Uh, who you associate with is kind of how you're going to end up. So if you hang out in this type of milieu, this art, artistic environment, it helps take a, 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 takes the edge away. You know, it, it's, it's a, really rehabilitative and healing to be able to, to have this outlet, to be able to go to a room just once a week and paint. Art's also given me a way to give back. Uh, a lot of guys in here, we've taken a lot of stuff from a lot of people. And uh, it's sad, and a lot of us are left with victims that we can't make amends to. And we can give back uh, indirectly to our victims by arts. There's a lot of programs and stuff uh, 
raffles, donations that we can do, outlets that we can use to kind of give back with our art. And uh, for me, that's important to me. This is a negative environment with a lot of positive things going on through the program of arts, through the program of rehabilitation, through the program of giving back. So it literally changes the culture of prison from being this violent perspective that everybody has about inmates and that we're not just lost souls, we're your family. We're your brothers, we're your sisters, we're your children, we're your uncles, we're your, we're your relations. And we shouldn't be forgotten because we made a mistake. We should be assisted in our journey back to real life so that we bring realistic tools to better acclimate ourselves to life. As I focus to the ficus, I might just like us to harmonize like those birds, just like those birds, just like those beautiful birds of paradise.